Hello, it's me again, Miss B, the art teacher. I'm here today to give you another little mini lesson in case you're really, really bored out there. I did this in my classroom and I did a little bit of something else, um, but it's op art and it's art that creates an optical illusion and the kids really loved it. So we did two versions of this. We did a bigger one for my older grades, like three, four, um, three and four actually, because I teach K through four. And we did a more simplified version for the younger kids, but I'm just going to do this one in case you want to challenge yourself a little bit. This is of art and it's super cool and super easy to do. Might make you a little bit dizzy. And if you don't have crayons, you can always color in with a black marker. I think black and white on this one looks the best. But you choose two colors to color it in. And you'll see what I mean in a minute because I'm going to draw it out for you. So, on my paper. Look, I already have a dot. Um, here is my paper. It is the size of a computer paper once again. And it is up and down, not side to side. So you see my little dot right here that I made when I'm looking through the camera, it looks weird. So I made it with my pencil. So what you're going to do is you have to have an even amount of lines. You could do six, you could do eight, but I would not do five. I hope I'm telling you this correct. We'll find out in a minute. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do eight lines from this little bitty point and they're going to go straight out. If you have a ruler at home, you can use a ruler. I'm not going to use one to show you that it is possible to do this without a ruler, but you're going to make lines from the point all the way out to the edges. So I'm going to do that on the camera for you now. Hopefully I can see what I'm doing because I need to wear my glasses and not look at the camera, which is hard. Okay, so here's the dot. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to start by doing, what did I say? Eight lines. One two three i may actually need more because my paper is bigger four five look they're not perfect six i missed the whole dot i'm making the dot bigger huh how many was that one two three four five six seven Hmm, my cat wants to join in. And eight. So, it's a little crazy. It is hard to watch the camera and to watch my paper. Especially since I'm old and I can't see. So, that creates a little bit of a challenge. But anyway, let's keep going. So, now you have this radial thing going on for your optical illusion. And I kind of skipped some of the elements of art because I wanted to move on and do something a little bit more challenging. We'll get back to those little principles um, or elements of art so that we don't skip any steps, but we're skipping one today. Um, okay. So when you start this, we're going to do up, down, up, down. So let me show you what I mean by that. As close as you want to go, I'm going to go down. And then for the next one, I'm going to make a hill. Now you have to really go slow to get this right. For the next one, I'm going to go down. For the next one, I'm going to make a hill. For the next one, I'll go down. I'm going right in between the lines. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just needs to connect. Down. And the last one is up. So does everybody see that? You have to go slow or you'll mess this up. Okay. So they should match all the way up this little cone thing. So I'm going to leave a space and I'm going to start another row. I'm going to go down just like the one right before it in this row. And then I'm going to go up. And then I'm going to go down. And then I'm going to go up. I wouldn't make too much space in between. Because then you'll have a lot to color. I am going slow. I'm looking at the one before it. So if this goes up, the next one has to go up. And so on and so on. So maybe you can see what I'm talking about. Make sure they connect. There's my second row. Here I go again. I'm going to go a little bit faster so you can see. Okay. So here's this. Here's this. Here's this. And I think that I want to do this with... 
in black and white and make a really good contrast because that's the dark against light or small against big. Contrast is really cool. Um, that's what contrast means. So if you look, I followed the same direction. Now, some of you might be wondering, I'm running out of room. Might be wondering, what are we going to do next? I'll show you. Look, so far it's cool. It looks like, kind of looks like a spider web. So if you run out of space and you feel like you want to go a little bit more, you could make it go off the page, but follow the same. So do y'all see what I've done here? I'm kind of trying to show you. I'm going to make it look like it comes back on the page. And then I'm going to do this one up here. As long as I'm still leaving the same space. And I am going in the same little dip or above. Okay, look. Do you see how the cones, like this is a cone right here. Okay. The cones, they're all dipping down and they connect. I went slow to make sure that they do that. Okay. The more space you have in between them, the easier it will be to color them. If you're really going to challenge yourself, put them closer together, but then you'll have, you'll be there. Like I tell my kids in class, you'll be there till you're 20. And I don't want any 20 year olds in the fourth grade still working on this project. So we probably don't want you there. Although right now you have nothing but time. So notice how all of these dip and then the next cone, they all have a little hill. Okay. So that's what each little cone has to have. They have to go in the same direction. These are all have a hill. These all dip. So, so far, so good. So now whatever colors you want, you pick two colors. It can be crayon. It can be whatever you've got on hand. I kind of like the idea of black marker, but I don't have one right in front of me. So I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. It's a checkerboard pattern. That's what's so cool. I'm, I'm going really fast. So don't criticize my coloring. Okay. So black, white, black, or whatever it is. Oh, I almost messed up because I'm looking at the camera. OMG. So look at here. Black, white, black, white, or gray in this case. And you hear my bird in the background. She's just talking to herself because she's a little crazy. Just like her owner. Okay, um, so here I am. I am coloring them in. This is a really cool design. And when I did all these op arts with my kids in my room, in my classroom, I had a lot of kids come back and tell me, I made this at my house. So that makes me think that... You know, they really enjoyed it, and they brought me some of their designs. So anyway, you get the, the idea. So you do one around, one section around, and then you go to the next section and color that section. Be very careful that you don't put the same color close together, because then that just kind of defeats the purpose of this whole op art lesson. Um, like I said, I'm using dark against light, so I'm doing some contrast here. Um... So I skipped now. This is the dark. Here's the light. Here's the dark. Okay. I know my coloring is crazy. But I'm just doing the best I can because I'm just like you. I am in my minion pajamas. And my hair looks crazy. But right now, these are the times of... Home art, and this is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, so then the next one is white, and then here is like gray or black or whatever you're doing. Um, pink, white, I don't know, whatever you're doing. But anyway, they could be any two colors. You can only pick one. Just make sure they're not on top of each other or right beside. So the way I did it was I started in the in the center of the radial thing right here, and then I'm going to keep on going, keep on going. Just make sure you don't have two of the same color on top of each other. Um, hopefully that makes sense and that's the beginning of that. I'm not going to sit here and color the whole thing for you because then we'd be, you'd be watching me color for like hours on end and I know that you're bored but I'm pretty sure you're not that bored. So anyway, for my students, if you're watching this, I miss you so much and 
I miss being in class and hopefully you're getting something out of this and you're working with me. Um, just continue to look for new lessons. I'll try to put them on as fast as possible. I just have to look for the terms and what I'm going to do next, but hopefully you're getting something out of this. Okay. Be safe. Talk to you next time.